What was yeah. life's reaction to your slam? Um, friends, so some of them that were all about wanting to party and things like that, they slowly kind of just stopped coming around, stopped calling, and, and I stopped calling them. So, But some of the other ones that stuck around, some of them were like, are you sure about what you're doing? There was one Hindu friend that I had, and she... Um, she actually brought me books about Hinduism, and she said, "Why don't you consider this?" And I said, "No, you know, I don't." See, but like, why? What do you, I mean? Do you even know the the answer to that oh, yes, question? Oh I do, I do. Um, I don't believe in polytheism, and as much as you know, um, and of course, I don't know that much about Hinduism, but I do know that they they have the concept of, you know, many gods or, you know, and I'm sure that maybe somebody might explain it to me another way that there is just one powerful and the other ones are representations of something else. I don't know, but it wasn't, I mean, as soon as I saw it and I soon, as soon as I saw images, like I said, I'm turned off about from that stuff. So I said, no, I don't, that's not what I want. I have a great love for Jesus, right? Peace be upon him. And I believe in Islam because Muhammad, so it was some peace be upon him, believed in him as well. And he, and he was a prophet just like Muhammad was, right? Peace be upon them. So I'm not, I don't want to diverge from that. And, um, and, and at that point, I mean, I was firm in my conviction. And I don't think anybody should convert to a religion unless they are 100% sure about what they're doing. Oh, so this was, this was after you already became afterwards, Muslim. Afterwards, oh. right? So yeah, she came afterwards with that. And I said, no. Um, yeah, what, what, what did you struggle with after you became Muslim? So my family, even though they were understanding, at first they thought it was a phase. And, um, and one of the things that they said, um, and I talk about this in, in my book, De Puerto Rico to Islam with Love. Um, that book is, is a collection of poetry, but I talk about how I became Muslim, what, you know, my story. And one of the things is um, they thought it was a phase, and they also thought that I was just following my friend. Mm. who was Muslim. They said, oh, you're just trying to be like her. Or right? she's brainwashing you? No, they didn't think of it that way. They said that it was on me. They, they, oh, you're just trying to be like this person. And it wasn't about that. Because by the this time... One, right? Yes. So by the time I converted to Islam, I was already living uh, like 600 miles away. So it, her, her influence was not there anymore. And I converted way after I moved from where she was. So it was like four years, three years later. So I told them it doesn't have anything to do with that. So at first they thought, oh, it's just a phase. She's just kidding. But then when they saw me taking out the prayer rug and starting to pray, I would get remarks like, oh, you're, you think you're Aladdin, you're going to fly away on your magic carpet, things like that. My brother also was like, oh, you think you're Arab? That was a big thing. In the Latino community, people equate Islam to being Arab because of a lack of information, lack of education. And so, the, or the Turcos, right? So the Turks. <laughs> mm. So when I converted, my brother was like, oh, you're turning your back on your culture. You think you're, you think you're Arab now. And I would have to explain to them, no, it's not like that. And, um, and then a year after I converted, September 11th happened, and that was just a whole nother set of issues because my parents became concerned for my safety because I was wearing hijab. They made me take it off. Whoa, so you were wearing hijab once you converted? Uh, not right away. So there was a, a period of time that I wasn't wearing it because my parents were still kind of, I was transitioning. And then I started wearing it when I started working in a clinic that was owned by two Muslim doctors. And so since I was working there, I told my parents, oh, come on, I'm just going to wear it there. Because I used to wear it to go to, like, the mosque or an Islamic class or something like that. So I'm just going to be working. So, and so they said, okay, fine. So I started wearing it, and I was wearing it regularly, and I was happy with the decision. But then once what made you make this decision to wear the hijab? A lot of Muslim girls struggle with the, with the hijab and putting it on, especially in a country or even society that's predominantly non-Muslim. It was because it was part of my identity. You know, Islam became part of my identity. I've always been a person that that is very strong about how I feel about my my identity and who I am. When we moved to the states, my my mom struggled trying to learn English and 
she would be embarrassed when we were out in the supermarket and we were speaking in Spanish. She would try to switch it up and start speaking in English, and I'd be like, no, why are you doing that? Speak to me in Spanish. That's my language. That's our language. So I've always been, you know, very strict about that. I'm sticking, I'm spe speaking Spanish. If, I, if I'm Muslim, I'm going to be wearing hijab because this is who I am. Hmm. And, and, and you didn't struggle with the hijab concept at all? You didn't go, hmm, I come from a Puerto Rican culture where we're not wearing hijab, where, you know, we can dress a little bit more relaxed. This, isn't this oppressive towards women? None of those thoughts? I never thought of it that way because I read about women in Islam and hijab during the time that I was learning. And I also, I mean, I grew up with nuns being my teachers at school, and they were wearing a you know, a scarf around their head. So what was the difference? I mean, yes, there were struggles because I, I was afraid of what my family in Puerto Rico would think when, when I went back. But, um, but once I went and got, you know, kind of got over it, it, it was fine. And people in Puerto Rico didn't have a problem. Even now, I feel more comfortable as a hijabi going to Puerto Rico than here in the States. Hmm. Very in, cool. in Puerto Rico, I'm just another Puerto Rican with a scarf on my head. Here, I'm a Latina, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Puerto Rican, I'm a person of color. I'm all the minorities here in the States. Yeah. So, and we get treated that way. We're marginalized here in the States. In Puerto Rico, it's, it doesn't feel that way at all. Okay. So, what, what, okay, so after you put on the hijab and, you, and your family was, was kind of figuring it out, what, what started to happen there? Um, eventually, they got used to it. It's just your family is going to love you no matter what, right? So it just takes time for them to get used to it. There were conversations. Sometimes there were arguments. But eventually they, they just saw that I was, I mean, it was my conviction and I wasn't going to change and it wasn't a phase. So they were okay with it. Okay, so now that you have your hijab on and your family's finally convinced, what struggles did you now have, you know, becoming now, you know, a better Muslim, you know, improving the journey of Islam now that it's, you know, really started. Yeah, you know, when I first converted, the, the guy that helped me, the brother, he was like, now that you're becoming a Muslim, now you're going to have struggles. He was like, for the next two years, you're going to have a, a hard time. And I was like, really? I mean, and this is what he told me as a person that wants to convert. Like, you know what, now that you're going to be Muslim, it's going to get harder for you. Instead of saying, oh, yeah, everything's going to be good. So I had good advice. Um, so I knew that to expect that things were going to be hard. Um, the way he described it is that the devil is, is upset that now you're on this path. So he's going to try to find ways to kick you off the path. Um, there were struggles with, I mean, as far as my friends, I got over that. Um, but now there were struggles with sifting what culture and religion was. When you first become Muslim, the people around you influence you. So, um, and sometimes I say this, that I became Muslim, bef I became Egyptian before I became a Muslim. <laughs> and, I, and I don't mean that in a bad way. But there, there was a lot of Egyptian culture because I had a lot of Egyptian friends that I had to learn it wasn't really part of Islam. So you have to make that distinction. You have to find yourself in the Muslim community. And it's hard because people don't understand you, um, understand your own culture. So you have to try to introduce them to it. Well, this is what a Puerto Rican Muslim is. This is what my culture is about. So w would you, did you struggle with things like um, how to communicate with the opposite gender? Uh, you know, in the Muslim community, it's, it's so different yeah. than in, in the Hispanic community and an American community. Um, did you struggle with kind of how you speak or the mannerisms, all of that kind of stuff? Yes, absolutely. So I've, I've been to gatherings and I had, you know, some of my Muslim friends who were born Muslim, who were Arab, or they would tell me, oh, don't laugh like that, you know. Like, <laughs> don't move a certain way. Don't be too out there. You know, you have to kind of tone it down. And, Are um, they speaking about in front of like men or just in right, general? Right, if we were in a crowd, in a mixed gathering, oh, okay. for example, right? And then um, people would tell you, oh, you know, don't don't look at uh, uh, the opposite gender in the eye and things like that because 
you know, I it's it's bad manners or something like that. But you know, you we're here, and in the I would see that there's there there's a hypocrisy in that because you you will have, for example, I went to to the university, I went to UMBC, and there was a, a Muslim MSA, right, the Muslim Student Association, and you would have all the 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 guys gathered around, you know, in front of the 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 uh, hall where we would pray. And then I would come out of the elevator and it was like cucarachas, like cockroaches, just mm -hmm. They would just leave like, and just so I could walk by and they would be like, oh. <laughs> but these same guys would be going to class and interacting with, their, with the girls in class or they would be paying somebody at the supermarket and having a conversation, chit chatting. So I mean, what, I guess it's, it's, it's out of respect but we have to be easy with each other. I mean, why not have a conversation? And you know, as long as there is no bad intention there, then it, it should be okay. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> I don't want to quote. I don't want to quote this, but there's an Egyptian movie that where they were like Talama in public with no feelings. Then so what? So, you know, but <laughs> 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 <That's it>. <laughs> <laughs> we. Yeah, but like it, it, you're so right about that because I haven't actually interacted with a Muslim girl outside of like family, friend, or family till I was in college, I think. And there's an awkwardness there there's until you kind of get awkwardness. used to it. Because it's, I, it's like, how do I, do I, like you're saying, it's like, do I look at her? Do I not look at her? Where do I look? Where do, I, do I even talk to her? Should I move away? <laughs> there's a different level of respect. Mm -hmm. With, it's, it's especially like if you're a hijabi because you know it, it's just like okay wait this person is like this hijab it kind of symbolizes like it's a shield you know don't mess with this person yeah like what the like the medicine or the prescription god prescribed to us with the hijab does its job very well psychologically exactly. and subconsciously for us immediately we respect women more the moment they have hijabs on that's the 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 issue isn't there. The issue isn't the respect part. The issue lies in, like, how do we find a good balance, a good middle? Because, like you're saying, that's an extreme right there. If I can't communicate with Muslim girls, but then I'll, I can communicate all the time with non-Muslim girls, how does that, you know, how am I supposed to find healthy relationships for marriage later on? Or not that's even like that, problem. you know, like, just be normal, I guess, in the Muslim community. It's like, okay, well, if I have to sit there acting all weird and stuff, then I'm just not going to come here. And that, that's really what, what I started doing. Is I was just like, I'm just not going to show up here if I'm looked at sideways every time I talk to someone that's not a guy, I guess. Yeah, that, and that's an, that's an issue within the community. Um, even so how do you deal with that? I mean, I just continue to, do, to live my life, you know. I, um, and I did... I was that person that, you know what, I'm just going to look away, look down, not make eye contact. And because I felt that that would make the other person feel comfortable. I would kind of gauge the conversations like that. If this is a person who's ultra religious and they don't want to make eye contact, they don't want to interact, then I would just go along with it. And if it was someone who's more open, like here, I feel comfortable talking to you and, and interacting, but I may go to another setting and it, and it may be completely different. Yeah. And I think that's, it turns a lot of Muslims off, right? both men and women, because they're so used to Western interaction between the sexes, which is on the complete opposite spectrum of what we're talking about. And then they go into this bubble, this Muslim bubble, and it's just, you know, you can't even look at them. I think that turns people off, uh, and, and it should. How did it, I guess, how did you reconcile that or be like, no, this isn't Islam? Because you have to differentiate that from Islam and recognize, oh, no, this is a little bit of South Asian culture here. There's a little bit of Arab culture in this. It just took a lot of time. It took a lot of time, and then I started meeting more and more people who were Latino Muslims or converts. Mm -hmm. And we all kind of shared that background. And we, we all compared notes, so to speak, right? You know, have, you, have this happened to you? What's, you know, so we would all talk about our experiences and, and kind of just look at examples from the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and, and, and his companions and all of their interactions. And we, you can see that women, I mean, that's the thing. Education is so important. You can see how women interacted with the prophet himself, 
peace be upon him, with their own spouses. And there are stories that are just hilarious about how women would just, you know, stand up in, in, in the middle of a khutbah or something, in the middle of the masjid and just say, or in the mosque, just make a statement like, no, you're wrong, to the caliph, to the, the leader of the Muslims. If they can do that at that time, way back when, what about us now? Why can't we stand up and say something? Why can't we have an interaction? So I think just reading about those things just let me know, like, this is not the way that it's supposed to be. And I think I had to do the same thing because one of the things is I would learn about Islam and I would love it. I'd love it and I'm like sitting there like, yes, this is this is the right way. And then I'd go to an Islamic institution and I'd deal with Muslims and I'd leave going, I don't know if this is religions for me. I can't interact with people like this. And what helped, what you know, what made me firm in the religion was going back and, like you're saying, read and learn more and be like, oh wait, no, this isn't what the religion teaches. You got to separate the humans from the religion because at the end of the day, Muslims are just people. You know, like Ozzy left his wallet and keys on the table at the mosque the other day, and then he couldn't find it after Friday prayer. He was like, I, I just left it here because, you know, we're, we're at the mosque. And I'm like, Ozzy, Muslims are people. They're going to rob you. They're going to steal you. They're going to lie to you. They're going to do all that. Thankfully, yeah. the mosque keeper actually put his wallet and keys away because he knew of that fact. Uh, but, yeah, it's just that we have to learn to separate the people from the religion. Yeah, and a lot of – this is a, a, a well-known saying amongst convert communities that if I knew – Muslims before I knew Islam, then I wouldn't have become a Muslim. Absolutely. 